So have you ever had a head gasket fail on your engine and now you're wondering what exactly needs to be done to remedy the problem? How do you check the block, clean it, and also how to check the cylinder head for warpage and also clean its surface and whether you need to send the cylinder head to a machine shop to have the mating surface resurfaced and or pressure tested or whether you're just better off getting rid of the engine and putting a used or a rebuilt engine in. Answers to all those questions and more in this video. Hey, 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 how's it going, do it yourself first? That's right, today we're gonna go over the procedures I go through and also some of the things that are very important and need to be checked properly whenever you're replacing a head gasket on an engine. All right, so the first step is to obviously verify that it's indeed your head gasket, that it's bad and it's not a problem with the cracked cylinder head, cracked block. Now on this engine, it was easy to verify because we had an external coolant leak back here. and we had no other signs. We didn't have coolant mixing with the oil. We had no low compression in any of the cylinder heads, no misfires, nothing else. So in our case, it's pretty straightforward. In your case, it may not be. If you've had an engine that has overheated severely, where you suspect now it has a bad head gasket, you know, it's blowing smoke out the tailpipe, you have low compression, you have maybe coolant in mixed with your oil. Now those are all good signs that you have a bad head gasket, but you also have a cracked block and or a cylinder head as well. Now a lot of times when you have low compression in one or two cylinder heads, you can get a bore scope through the spark plug hole and check and verify where that leak is. Is it just from the cylinder head gasket or is it actually from a crack in the cylinder head or the block? Because let's say you get a bore scope in there and there's a crack in the block, and there's no point in spending a whole lot of time removing the cylinder head. You just need to get rid of that engine and get a different used one or rebuild one. Also something to quickly touch upon is that if you ever have oil mixed with your coolant and not the other way around, that's usually a bad sign. That's because let's say you have a bad head gasket where it has failed right here or even here. These are all coolant passages right here. And when the head gasket fails around these areas, you're gonna have coolant leaking into your cylinders and then going down and mixing with your oil. So yeah, if you have an engine that has low compression and you go to check your oil, it's all, you know, coolant and that milkshake stuff on your oil dipstick, then that's probably what has happened. But the other way around, when you only have oil mixing with your coolant, then that means there's probably a crack between one of the pressurized oil passages and a coolant passage. And when that happens, oil usually most of the times will leak into the coolant side because it's under more pressure. Now, there are other ways that this can happen depending on how your car's engine is set up. The main one is gonna be your engine oil cooler. So make sure if you ever have this problem where only oil is mixing with the coolant before you condemn the engine, uh, you pressure test your engine oil cooler and also depending on your car, you do some research and make sure there's no other way that the oil can mix with the coolant. All right, so next let's say you get the engine apart like us and you need to check for warpage. Well, before you check for warpage, you need to completely clean the mating surface both on the engine and the cylinder head. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good reading when you use your straight edge with some feeler gauges to check for warpage. Now, as far as how you should go about cleaning the mating surfaces, a lot of people I've seen use these Rolock discs. They're okay and safe for the most part. However, first of all, make sure you use the fine or this white one if you ever decide to use one of these. The other problem is if you use these near the edges, you run the risk of rounding off these edges. Well, you're on the risk of rounding off all the edges, but it's most problematic where the tolerances are very tight around the compression rings and the compression areas. And then when you round those off over time, you know, I'm gonna exaggerate this a little bit, but you know, just tiny amount of the, the head gasket is gonna stick past these edges. And then, you know, the compression is gonna eat away at that head gasket. And then you could potentially run into some premature head gasket failures. Now people swear by these, they say they've never had a problem using these. But then again, it's hard to verify whether, you know, that head gasket stayed good for the life of that engine or not. Because a lot of times, you know, mechanics use these to run through the job and then they send the customer on their way, head gasket fails three years later prematurely. No one hears ever back from that customer. They don't let the mechanic know. They don't even know whether it was this that caused the head gasket failure or not. But anyway, if you're gonna use one of these, Use it on the block side, especially if you have a cast iron block. Don't use it on an aluminum block, only cast iron blocks, and also stay away from the compression rings. You know, you can use these on these areas just to clean up, speed up the process all around the engine. Stay away from these and do those with a razor blade. You'll be surprised how much some brake clean a razor blade can get done. Make sure you use, when you use this, you keep it flat. You know, don't go like this around the edges, especially on the compression rings and you keep it flat, use some brake clean, spend some time, some elbow grease, 
and you'll be able to get this really clean. And on the cylinder head, I would definitely suggest you only use a razor blade and some brake clean because most cylinder heads are actually made out of aluminum. And if you use those roll lock discs around these compression areas, you're gonna round these areas off, causing potentially premature head gasket failure in the future. Also another problem with using one of these or any abrasive pad for that matter is that as you're using these, as these wear out, you know, they're flinging around very small particle, abrasive particles throughout the working area. Some of these can end up mixed with your engine oil through one of the oil passages and whatnot, and then that's gonna potentially cause some uh, bearing problems in the future. Your oil filter is gonna have a hard time filtering out these uh, very, very small particles. Now in this particular engine, one thing I need to do is to completely clean these studs on your engine. You're probably not gonna have these problems. You're gonna have head bolts or cylinder head bolts that either need to be replaced because they're torque to yield or simply cleaned and reused. And to clean these studs, I'm only gonna use this nylon brush. Now actually first, I'm gonna vacuum out these bigger chunks of corrosion and buildup. We got it all around these studs and this engine block because otherwise they can end up inside our engine. All right, so it's been about an hour later, lots of brake clean and elbow grease, and this is what we have now. At first glance, it might look like we're nowhere near done, but in fact, we're more or less done. Now on this engine, due to these studs being in coolant, we have corrosion coming up through the threads and eating away in these areas right around them. So they're not gonna, they're gonna feel funny to the touch, but the rest of it, it's gonna feel pretty smooth to the touch, and that's actually a pretty good way to test and make sure you're done uh, scraping and cleaning. Now on the outer edge on this engine, things are a bit rough, but that's just because due to corrosion over time, since this is kind of exposed to the atmosphere, it's gonna feel a little rough, but all these areas, these areas around the compression rings, between the cylinder heads especially, or the cylinders especially, it's very smooth. And here's a look at the cylinder head as well. This is also thoroughly cleaned. Again, it might look to you on camera that this is not clean enough and you need to scrape it some more. But for the sake of argument, let me show you something. So this looks like it's done and needs to be cleaned. And to the touch, it's pretty smooth and it, it's clean enough. But let's say we get the scraper or razor blade and we start scraping away. As you can see, nothing is coming up. It's not being cleaned. It's not, I mean, it's, it's cleaned, but you're not getting any of that residue off. These are just microscopic, you know, particles stuck to the cylinder head and the engine as well. As again, as long as, you know, it feels smooth to the touch, I mean, as in really, really smooth, and you've gone over it with the razor, brake clean. And also some other thing you can use is a gasket remover. You spray that on here, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and then you start using the razor blade that also helps but you know brake clean will usually do the trick as well and also you know just spending enough time i spent about an hour i think scraping these two pieces off all right now that we have everything cleaned up we're ready to check for warpage now warpage is basically what happens when you overheat an engine now if you have a setup here where you have a cast iron engine block and an aluminum head the likely scenario is that you're going to warp the aluminum head because aluminum is a softer metal and also it's a smaller hunk of metal to begin with, so it's gonna overheat more than the cast iron engine block. Now, depending on the size of your engine, the warpage, allowable warpage is gonna vary. So this is an inline six cylinder head. The allowable warpage for these, I'm gonna go off the top of my head, is like four thousandths of an inch. Now, when I say four thousandths of an inch, that's combined warpage. So let's say if you have two thousandths of an inch on the head and two thousandths of an inch on the block, that gives you four thousandths of an inch. So that's okay. Now, to be on the safe side, I usually don't, I, I resurface the cylinder head if the combined warpage, even on this, is more than three thousandths of an inch. 
And again, if you go smaller on a smaller engine, let's say an inline four cylinder engine, the allowable warpage, the long way, this is the long way, I should clarify. When you measure it this way, which we're gonna do in a minute, is for a four cylinder would be about two to three thousandths of an inch. And then if you have a boxer engine, like a Subaru boxer, four cylinder boxer, where each cylinder has, you know, two, you have two uh, cylinders on each head and they're pretty small and narrow, then the allowable war pitch for those, I would, I would guess would be less than two thousandths of an inch. And as far as what you need to check for war pitch is one, on very thin feeler gauges like this one, where they go down to two thousandths of an inch and also one and a half thousandths of an inch, and also a straight edge. No, not this one. No straight edge that's used for any type of carpentry work is gonna work for this. You need a machinist straight edge. Now I got two of them. This is an aluminum one, which is 24 inches long, pretty cheap. I'll put a link to it in the, on Amazon if you're interested. And I also have one made out of steel. These stay more true longer because again, steel is a harder metal. All right, now as far as how you check for warpage, well, going the long way, you wanna check in a bunch of places. So you wanna first check out here, then down the middle of all the cylinder heads, then out here, then across, then this way. Then you use your feeler gauge to run between the, the straight edge and the head, and whatever you can fit in there, that's gonna be the warp edge in that direction. So you write that down. All right, so as you just saw, we took some measurements and we have about a one and a half thousandths of an inch of warpage in these areas I marked. And I know that because I couldn't fit a two thousandths of an inch feeler gauge under these areas. So this is the maximum warpage we have right now on this cylinder head going this way. But we need to also measure it going this way. And the maximum allowable warpage for this way is a lot less. It's simply a shorter distance. You have less bolts pushing the cylinder head on top of the engine block. The warpage is more this way because, you know, and also it's more the longer your cylinder head is because you have more bolts flattening out your cylinder head on top of your engine. So the maximum allowable warpage, again, I haven't looked this up, but if I remember correctly, is no more than one and a half or two thousandths of an inch going this direction. So we're gonna measure that on the cylinder head. It goes without saying, we do the same measurement on the engine block as well. We add, those, we add up our measurements and make sure we're within spec. All right, so as you just saw, we measured for warp edge this way. Unfortunately, I don't have a one thousandth of an inch feeler gauge right now. I've misplaced mine, but the way things are looking, it doesn't look like that this engine was ever severely overheated at least. Now, one thing that's standing out though, in this area where we had the external coolant leak, is that this is the hole for our stud, for our cylinder head stud. This is a coolant passage. Shagwar, in their infinite wisdom, has placed the coolant passage on the outside of where the stud is. There's no other thing holding this down, so it makes sense over time. I don't know, maybe corrosion ate away at a little bit of the head gasket in this area, and then we developed an external coolant leak. That's what it looks like as of right now. All right, now we do the same thing on the engine block. I don't expect, again, the engine block to be severely warped since the cylinder head wasn't, but nonetheless, we need to check and make sure all right, so as far as the warpage on the block goes, it's pretty much the same as the cylinder head. You're always gonna have a little bit of warpage. So we got a, almost, again, one and a half thousandths of an inch on the block as well. So we have a combined warpage of three thousandths of an inch on this inline six cylinder engine, which in my opinion should be okay, it's within spec. Now if this was an inline four cylinder engine and definitely a cylinder head off of a V6 engine, which would be even shorter than a cylinder head on an inline four cylinder engine, we definitely send the cylinder head to be resurfaced. But in my opinion, on this budget head gasket replacement on this engine, with 3 thousandths of an inch, we'll be okay. All right, now let's assume you're not within spec. The next question should be, by how much? Are you out of spec an inch? Did you severely overheat your engine where your cylinder head twisted like a pretzel? <laughs> if that's the case, you're not gonna be able to replace that or resurface that cylinder head. You need to replace it either with another good used one or rebuild one or whatever. 
you simply can't shave off that much off the cylinder head to make it true again. You're going to throw the compression ratio, all sorts of things off, and you just can't simply do it. As far as how much you can shave off a cylinder head, that's in your owner's manual. Also, you can ask the machine shop where you take your cylinder head to. Now, let's assume that you're, you're warped, but you know, the cylinder head is warped, but it's not severely warped where it can be resurfaced. So when you take your cylinder head to the machine shop, you should definitely tell them to make sure that it's not cracked to begin with. Even though if you even had the borescope down the cylinder and you couldn't see any cracks, you still should have them check it for, for leaks. Make sure there's no cracks. Nothing like that, because if there are, because you know, you pay them to resurface the cylinder head, and then it turns out you had a cracked cylinder head then. Not only you spent all that money resurfacing the cylinder head, but you probably found that out that it was cracked after you put it back on the engine and started running the car. And it goes without saying, if you want to spend the money, this would be the perfect time to get a valve job done as well. You know, have them check the guides, replace them. Also the same goes with the valves. Now one thing to note is that Generally speaking, when you take your car to the or the cylinder head to the machine shop, you should remove the camshafts. It's fairly easy to do. Otherwise, the machine shop is going to charge you an hour of labor just to remove the camshafts because they need those removed in order to be able to put this on the resurfacing machine and resurface the bottom of your cylinder head. Generally speaking, these intake or exhaust studs are okay, but you know you want to call and check and make sure that they should be okay. Otherwise, you should remove them as well. As far as what I'm going to do with this cylinder head, I'm simply going to clean it up a little bit more. Same thing on the engine block. Throw a new head gasket on the block and throw this on top of that. So yeah, we kind of got unlucky that this thing developed an external coolant leak, but we got lucky that this doesn't need any machining work done. So yeah, if you want to see me put this engine back together, make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Check out my videos on this side of the screen. Also my videos in the suggestion box. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.